Many, many games throughout 2022 surprised us, but we got a list of a specific few of them today. Whether they surprised us by coming out of absolutely nowhere, or maybe a game that seemed like it was going to be bad, but it turned out great, or just a game we didn't expect to be a sales hit. We got a bunch of cool stuff here, so let's get started off with number 10. Cult of the Lamb is kind of an obvious one uh, for us here at Game Ranks, especially. It was not on our radar, and then we played it, and we got addicted to it, and it's one of our favorite games of the year. It is an indie game developed by uh, Massive Monster, but it is published by Devolver Digital, who, I mean, like, we should have known, because Devolver Digital, the games they choose to publish, oftentimes they don't miss. And Cult of the Lamb is a really incredible genre mashup. It's a mix between like a lo-fi chill game, like an Animal Crossing type of thing, and a dungeon crawler like Zelda, where you're going out, you're fighting cool bosses, using cool weapons, and then you're coming back to manage your little group, your little town. But here, it's a cult you're trying to build up, a demonic cult. So even though it's got a cutesy exterior and some quirky music, it's actually pretty dark, but it's really fun and pretty hilarious. This thing made a big splash. It has really been steadily growing since it released in the summer. And now at this point, it's overwhelmingly positive on Steam. And uh, frankly, at this point, I don't think we could say enough good things about it. A creative spin, a creative combination of games we've seen before, but with a sense of style and vibe and tone that we haven't really experienced before. Cult of the Lamb is definitely worth checking out. If your ears perked up when I mentioned any of those games that was inspired by or any elements of it, uh, just definitely just jump in. You're probably going to dig it. Now, next over at number nine, we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. Now, for old school gaming fans or just fans of the developer's previous work, it seemed like a safe bet the game was going to be good, right? I mean, it's published by Dotemu, the people who publish a lot of kind of old school style stuff, like the re-release of Windjammers, uh, the Streets of Rage 4 from 2020. That was pretty awesome. Shredder's Revenge serves as like a love letter, of course, to the nostalgia of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. If you love the cartoon, if you grew up with that stuff, it is all here and it is is all celebrated incredibly well, but also it's really a love letter to old school beat em up games. This game has all the types of sequences you'd expect, the enemy encounters, the over the top boss battles, the things in the environment you can use, the little hidden secrets, the cool music, all that stuff. It's updated a little bit. It's a little bit more playable for modern audiences, but it is still just old school beat em up goodness. And it seems like people agree. On Steam, it's overwhelmingly positive. And the developer publisher announced that the game sold well over 1 million units units, which is pretty cool considering you think at this point, you know, we're getting a little bit older and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and specifically beat em up brawler indie style games are a little bit more niche. But nope, TMNT Shredder's Revenge broke through. It was a big hit and we love to see it. Next over at number eight, we have Goat Simulator 3. Yes, believe it or not, they actually skipped Goat Simulator 2. It's kind of like a joke or a meme or something, but you'd be surprised how much of an impact the original Goat Simulator really had. It initially just kind of seemed like a goofy, broken meme game. Uh, they really rolled with it and kept updating it and put it on more and more platforms, and the thing became a sales juggernaut. And once again, it seems like they're capitalizing on that with Goat Simulator 3. It only just released, but so far, it seems like the response for people who did jump into it is pretty good. Reviews are decent, user reviews are a little bit better, and to be honest here at Game Ranks, we kind of underestimated it. We actually realized a lot in comments people have been asking for a before you buy for Goat Simulator 3, and we didn't see that coming. Checking it out a little bit on the surface level, it does seem cool. It's like a bigger, crazier, more experimental Goat Simulator game, and I think like the first game more than anything, this one's gonna have legs, especially with younger audiences who aren't necessarily on the gaming pulse. They're gonna get to it at some point, and they're probably gonna go nuts for it, but we also just wanted to talk about this one for a minute because it just came out and we haven't really had a reason to talk about it anywhere else, so yeah. Next over at number seven, we have Trombone Champ, which is a PC game that is currently ranked 13 on SteamDB and overwhelmingly positive. This dumb little goofy game is an absolutely incredible idea. It's essentially like a rhythm kind of guitar hero style game, but with you clicking and holding the mouse and dragging it and the character is playing a trombone. It's a really simple game and kind of a gag, but it is really fun to play. And I'm not gonna lie, it got genuine laughs out of me. Hearing a sloppy, like messy trombone cover things like the national anthem take me out to the ball game and even beethoven was really worth the money spent you know sometimes i just appreciate a good laugh and it's a 15 dollars game and it seems like a lot of people were willing to plunk that down for this this one absolutely came out of nowhere somebody posted about it on social media at one point and then it was off to the races it kind of reminds me of like a nintendo wii like a wii sports type game with the player avatars but the game has a really good sense of humor especially with the animated backgrounds but also the fact that the 
intro of the game starts with like a cryptic kind of from software Dark Souls style intro that is really just total nonsense to set you up to play trombone. It's it's great. If you're interested in this one and maybe you got somebody else to sit down next to you and play it and have a good chuckle with uh, trombone champ is dope. Next over at number six, we have Goose Goose Duck. Now, this thing was definitely a grower, so to speak. At sixth place in popularity on SteamDB, and it actually came out in 2021. But, you know, like something like Among Us, it only got way popular later on. It's kind of like a more complex, cerebral variety on that, like, traitor, investigation, paranoia type gameplay scene in Among Us. And it's free to play. Some people might say it's just kind of like an Among Us ripoff, but, you know, we actually think that the sense of humor the little bit more personality to it is pretty cool. It's got a bunch of modes and really, even though us here at Game Ranks aren't like big Among Us people, we've barely ever talked about it. Goose Goose Duck is definitely a hit. You can't deny it just by looking at the numbers. People are hungry for these style of games and they'll take whatever they can get, especially I guess if there's ducks and funny costumes involved. Next over at number five, we have Neon White. Now this is one you're going to see on a lot of game of the year lists and also underrated game of the year list. Neon White is absolutely awesome, and honestly, we wish we've talked about it more. This is highly rated on all the platforms it's available, and it is pretty awesome. Now, there's some dialogue and some like visual novel style stuff that might not jive with everybody, but it's really that core gameplay. The raw fun factor here is awesome. It's fun, addictive, just solid gameplay with a really good sense of speed and movement. Essentially, you're gonna get hooked on first person speed running. Even the people who aren't necessarily into that type of speed running or score or leaderboard hunting, just how fun it plays here, it'll get you going. There's a randomness that cards bring to all of it, but it's really just the sensation behind this game, the flow of it all. It'll keep you playing for hours. Neon White is incredibly entertaining, and if you haven't heard of it yet, uh, you're probably going to when you see more YouTube channels or websites cover it and Game of the Year stuff, because it's weird, it's hard to explain, but it's fun and truly special. Next over at number four, we have High on Life, which we're gonna put in the surprisingly good category. This one is new, uh, released pretty close at the time of making this video, but it seems like so far, it is definitely a hit, specifically with Justin Roiland fans, you know, the creator of Rick and Morty. It's basically a comedy sci-fi first person shooter from the creator of Rick and Morty. And uh, with that comes a divisive type of humor that's not for everybody, but also a pretty good little fun first person shooter behind it with quirky weapons, cool environment types and boss battles. Reviews are kind of all over the place. Opinions are kind of all over the place, obviously because of humor. Humor's pretty subjective, but goddamn, go on social media, check user reviews. It seems like people are really, really enjoying this one. Not to mention the fact that it is one of Xbox Game Pass's biggest launches. As you probably know, this is an Xbox and PC game and it launched on Game Pass day and date and Microsoft officially announced that High on Life was Xbox Game Pass's biggest 2022 launch and the biggest third party Game Pass launch ever. So yes, this is absolutely a surprise hit. We didn't expect it to blow up this much, but I think the biggest thing this says is that people want to laugh and people like comedy in games. There's lots of games that have some humor in them, but not a lot of specific comedy games. High on Life did that and people were seemingly clamoring for that and they're eating it up. And you know what? You got to admit, that's pretty awesome. But now down to number three, let's talk Power Wash Simulator, dude. This game is absolutely huge. And what you might initially think is just another simulator style game that is absolutely boring. Believe it or not, there is a market for those games. A lot of people really love driving trucks in a realistic fashion to do deliveries or building a train or designing and flipping and selling a house. You know, these simulator games fill a niche, but it seems like Power Wash Simulator was the one to go the most mainstream. This one really just hooked people. For me, especially, it was one that I was like, eh, I don't know, man, and I tried it. I took the risk, I spent the money on it on Steam, and I was happy. It's really, really cool and surprisingly addictive. It's highly rated on all user sites, it's overwhelmingly positive on Steam, and shout out to the developers for taking something that seemed like it would have been the most boring thing ever for a video game, and packaging it with a strong presentation, some clever design ticks, because they made it one of the most satisfying and relaxing chill games this year. With Power Wash Simulator, it's very satisfying to just like put on a podcast and chill out and clean off a playground, or slowly power wash a fence and a patio little by little, strip by strip, and doing it with friends cooperatively makes it even better. We've talked about this here and there on the channel and people still don't believe us, but Power Wash Simulator is very cool and it has been a big hit. 
Next, down at number two, we have Stray, the cat game. Now, they knew what they were doing when they were making this game, a game where you play as a cat. Of course, people are gonna love it, but I, we just didn't realize how big of a deal it would be. Stray is an incredibly highly rated game everywhere. I mean, it's number two overall on Steam, and it's just kind of a quirky, artsy, lo-fi adventure vibes game where you play as a cat and you screw around in a sci-fi world. And it seems like that really freaking resonated with people because concurrent players on Steam at launch were absolutely massive. Apparently more than 4 million people have played Stray on PlayStation, which is a ton. No good sales numbers or data is out yet, but people have been using player numbers and stuff to really figure out what's going on. And so, I mean, between those numbers and it really topping the charts in Steam, I think it's safe to say this one is a surprise smash hit. Gotta love seeing a smaller scale, kind of independently developed game by a studio that this their first game uh, make this big of a splash. You love to see it. Also, I think it just filled a void. There were a lot of people out there that wanted to play as a cat. There's not a lot of games like this, and I expect maybe this will start a trend. I want more games where we play as cats and dogs, please. Hopefully Stray is indicative of the future. Now down to number one, we have, of course, Vampire Survivors. This is the top ranked game of the year on Steam, and it's just an incredibly basic looking, kind of inactive clicker game that actually has a ton of depth behind it. It's easy to pick up and play, but it's incredibly addictive, and there's enough stuff within to really keep you busy. It's all about just like kind of moment to moment endorphin rushes, just really tapping into that lizard part of your brain, but with a cool sense of style, music, character sprites that really celebrate Castlevania and classic games. It's all also a really cheap, affordable game. It's like five bucks and they just put out DLC for it. That's two bucks. It's overwhelmingly positive on Steam. It's topping all the charts. It's releasing on more platforms now on mobile. This thing is going to be a killer for a long time to come. There's other games like it in this new kind of subgenre, but Vampire Survivors is our favorite. And over the course of 2022, we've seen it slowly grow into an absolute powerhouse. Now, at the end of 2022, if you're in the gaming world at this point, you've definitely heard about it because it broke through. It's a big deal. It's a big hit. It definitely isn't for everyone, but uh, looking at the numbers, it seems like it's for a lot of people. <laughs> Those are some surprise hits from 2022 uh, for a variety of different reasons, but we got some bonus games for you as well, including Evil West for just really coming out of nowhere and really scratching that itch. It's that type of old school mid 2000s adventure action game that we've really wanted to play and we love it. And it seems like a lot of other people are as well. Along with that, Dwarf Fortress. This is an incredibly in-depth and complex game that was free to play for decades, and it finally came out on Steam with a good solid launch, and it seems like people really love it. And also, Multiversus. It managed to transcend just another Smash Brothers clone and really seems to have been taking off. A lot of people have played this one. It dominated Twitch for a minute. And we just love to see a game where Batman can punch Tom and Jerry in the face. But there you have it, some surprise hits of 2022. Of course, these aren't all of them. There's a lot of games that surprised us for various reasons, from being shockingly great to shockingly awful. So we want to hear from you guys in the comments. What was a surprise hit for you? If you appreciated this video, had fun, killed some time, or learned about a new game, clicking the like button's all you gotta do to help us out. We would really appreciate that. And if you're new, consider subscribing and maybe hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But either way, as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.